to you guys about, well, first I want to know where you're at. I think Caleb, I think you and I are going to be talking here soon. I don't think you are fully in. Go ahead. Tell, tell us where, you, where you're at right now. Uh, I live in Frederick here. So um, I was texting uh, Sherry earlier, you know, to see if I can even get on here. Cause I know we don't have everything set up yet. Um, and I think we're doing that tomorrow at 11. Um, so I just thought I saw the email. I just figured I would, uh, get on and, uh, introduce myself. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. Are you, are you fully licensed yet or still in the process of taking the test? Uh, fully licensed. So I, I passed the national, uh, about, Oh, what was that? A, a week and a half ago. So congrats. You're Thank probably you. still smiling from year to year after that one. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I'm just glad I found a testing date. It was on July, what was that, 2nd or 3rd. Um, I was on PSI just searching, um, and luckily one popped up. So um, Nice. So very excited. Good. And Carolyn, um, I know that you're in the Fort Collins office, kind of newer to the industry, but I don't think we've had the pleasure of really diving in. Um, how long licensed and, and any transactions? I just want to make sure that I tailor this to uh, basically from not being licensed to about maybe even like the third deal. <laughs> I wish. Um, so I joined, I, I joined Keller in like mid January. I took my test before, right before Christmas. So then I took a little break after all that studying and um, joined in January, kind of mid January. So, Perfect. and then of course, you know, a month later, <laughs> we started to have this virus hit. So I have, um, I have a buyer, I had two buyers and one of them um, got a job, in, he's moving here and got a job in Wyoming. So I've connected with um, Jake in my office that has a license in Wyoming because I don't. Yep. And so that's in the works. And then I have another buyer that is actually, it was a floor call and he actually moved. He's moving from the same neighborhood that I was in in Centennial <laughs> up to Fort Collins. So um, we're, we're working on, we're working on him. I'm really understanding at a different level, the disc profile. <laughs> yes. Working with him and his wife. So that's yes. been very helpful to kind of understand that a little bit and just dealing with them and talking with them. So basically great. one buyer <laughs> right now. No, that, that's great. I just want to, I just want to know a quick base. Um, with that being said, anybody watching the video and, and Caleb, we're going to get into it as we go through and train together. Um, I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of the disc profile. Um, I think it was a game changer for me. Um, I don't think it's for everyone, uh, but anybody listening to this who doesn't know the DISC profile, who wants some more education on it, I'm probably going to host a probably full-on just 100% DISC profile class awesome. um, at, at some point in time. But uh, Kayla, remind me, and we'll, we'll dive into that, and anybody listening here. Um, okay. a welcome, maybe Ashley? I'm not really sure. Yeah. Um, you, welcome. I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> No, you're fine. You're fine. We're just getting started here. I wanted to know, Ashley, really quickly, 30 seconds or less, um, how long you've been in the industry, license? I want to make sure that um, I'm tailoring this conversation to all that are, are attending. Um, yeah, I uh, started back in, I believe, April, May time, and cool. um, I just am closing on my first uh, transaction. Um, we're going to be completely funded by Friday. My sellers have already signed. It's actually one of my coworkers because I work full time as a nurse too. So, Fantastic. Okay, great. Well, let's get started. Let's just dive right in. I've got a lot of things I want to go over today. I want to go over the Ignite in, 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 its, in its entirety, as well as a few one-offs that I have for you guys as, as far as like some of the things that are here and some of the things that I've created over time. Uh, the example of my calendar, uh, where to get to Ignite, all of that. So those of you watching, welcome to Ignite. This is our first session being recorded for all that are not here. Screen share here. This is a little different for me. I'm used to teaching in person, in a classroom, hands raising, people with pens and papers. All right. Can everybody see this PowerPoint? Ignite your business. 
Perfect. Yes. All right. We're just going to skip right to the meat, the meat and the heart of this. Um, this is Ignite. And for anybody that's not uh, read this packet of information, anybody that hasn't heard of Ignite, um, the overall basis of Ignite is to get you off the ground. I, I would say that this is, when you're new, this is a very high level education, a lot of new things. Um, if you've been in the business world before, but new to real estate, there's going to be some things in there that, that will click for you. And then um, in an overall view, this, is, this, this can seem overwhelming, but it is the basis. This is the, the beginning of, of going through things. And the reason why they have different series is because each, each power session is, is just that. It's pretty powerful. There's a lot of things that you're going to want to take home. There's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of things that you're not going to want to do, and I'm going to encourage you to do it. And that brings me to my play all in point. This is a new, most likely this is a new business for you. And most likely this is something that you've never, you know, you've only wished uh, to be in. Anytime you've ever talked to a real estate agent who's been in the industry for a number of years, I truly don't believe that you can ever have one, two, three, or four conversations with that person and really understand the entirety of it. Um, so there's a lot of preconceived notions in this industry. We're going to tackle those. Um, there's a lot of um, a lot of ways to get started, and we're going to tackle those. Ignite is one of the biggest and, and best blessings that Keller Williams has to get started because it's a tangible step-by-step -step game plan, if you will, and, and material that you can always go back to and look through again and ask questions. Um, uh, before I was an instructor, I had to take Ignite. I, I took it for the first time. I was licensed for about three months and I took it for the first time. And one of the things that I, I can't stress enough is that I did not play full in. I did not play full on, full in, whatever you want to call it. Um, even though I was told to do so, even though I had convinced myself I was, I was doing so, playing full in is, is literally practicing the things that, that we're going to go over. Implementing the, the tactics and the strategies around getting your business started. Now, again, not everything is for everyone, but if there's a piece to this that may not be for you that we don't go over, you need to reach out to your coach, your mentor, your training partner, your team leader, whoever you need, because each step is important and there's ways to build these things in different ways. So don't just skip over something because it's not you. There's a way to do it and it's important to do it. Okay. Um, something else with Ignite and, and on, on this Zoom call or this video session, um, there's points in here where we would normally take breaks. We would normally pause make a few phone calls, fumble through. I would help you through it. Uh, because we're on Zoom and it's going to get a little chaotic, we're going to we're going to skip over some of those points, but I'm going to bring them up. I'm going to show you guys exactly what you should be doing and I encourage you to do it either right after this class or tomorrow, sometime very very in the near future before the next session. And that is what I would consider being playing full on. Playing full in will get your business off the ground faster. You'll close more deals quicker you'll make more money. Um, again, I did myself a disservice and I, I played probably 50 to 75% all in, even though I had convinced myself I was doing the right activity. So I'm going to get off my high horse on that. Let me show you guys where to get this material. So um, this is our PowerPoint, or this is our, I guess, PDF section we're going to go over today for session one but to actually get into the Ignite piece. If you go to KW Connect, depending upon how your homepage comes up, um, every now and then if you get in through the internet, there'll be an Ignite tab. You can just click right here in the middle, or if you're on the same screen that I'm on, you're gonna click on the search bar, Ignite, and it's gonna come up with a couple of different options here. This option here, Ignite, Here's your little binder book, upcoming courses, course materials. I just click straight into here and it'll take you to everything that's coming up. This is more of the info. Uh, this is where you can actually download everything that I have in instructor files. I think it's, it's valuable to see those and, and understand kind of what some of the correct answers are. Some of the things um, that you're going to answer through your own series uh, to validate and verify that what you're thinking is correct. 
Um, and then the student resources, this is more of the blank file. Um, and then your my tracker, this is where you can track um, any sort of contacts and different things. So we'll go through all of that. Something else that's new to um, Ignite and more of the, the video and visual learning is they now have Ignite through the international series. So I, I like I said, I'm, I'm a 100% um, full on with Ignite. However, I kind of tailor my series and my sessions uh, with Ignite in comparison to kind of our market and some of the things that I've developed over the years. The international um, course, if you will, is going to be very methodical and very much um, in alignment with the PowerPoint and the PDF. And so different learning styles will gravitate towards different things. And I would encourage you to take what I'm going to present to you guys as well as this. I've taken Ignite three times. And then I took a few years of, of training and studying before I was an instructor. But my first time in, there was a lot. Second time in, I picked up a few more nuggets. And the third time in, I really felt like I finally had some things down. So it's not, it's not, um, what am I looking for here? Uh, I encourage you to not only take this once, but twice and maybe even three times. Uh, but check out the uh, international course too. It's, it's quite eye-opening. To get to the materials, you can either go down here at the bottom or click on these tabs here. Um, and, and there's all sorts of different things that you can do and, and look through. So this is where I got my PDF. I wanted to show everybody that so that way you guys can all download it. Um, as far as following along today, as long as you have a pen and paper, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention a few different um, pages on here that you're going to want to go back to, a few different things that you're going to want to look up. Um, and so that'll help you as well. If you have it and you want to pull it up and you have two different screens, great. Uh, if not, I've got it right here for us. Um, getting started. So this table of contents, going right into it. Um, getting your head in the game. This, this, first, this first session is, is really all about kind of having that general overview sense of, of real estate. Okay. So I need you guys to jump into the chat bar. I need you to put your microphones on. I need you to interrupt me at any point in time in this. I, I'm a very interactive type of, of person. The more you stop me and the more you ask me questions, the more that you're going to learn and engage. I could talk about real estate. I could talk about getting your head in the game. I could talk about business until you're blue in the face or I'm blue in the face, I guess. Um, so there's so many things to go over. So whatever's important to you, reach out, interrupt. It's going to be valuable for everybody. But this first series is all about getting, getting situated and having a great mindset around what you're going to be going through and what you're in, right? I don't think that what we go through in life, uh, different jobs, careers, school, I don't believe that anybody's really ever taught us how to look down on something from a very like top level view, from like a bird's eye view or, or the top of the Eiffel Tower, I've heard. Um, to look down at what we're going to be doing. So that way you can see that this is a business and this is a huge entity that you have embarked on. And to understand that there's different facets to it all as far as marketing, such as business cards and signs or lead generation through uh, follow-up calls, text, emails, pop buys, handwritten notes. And then on the same token, you got to learn how to, how to set aside taxes and go through and find the, either the right CPA or do your taxes on your own and how business write-offs work and things of that nature. It's a, it's a big entity that we're going to tackle one step at a time. And Ignite is more about the nitty gritty and getting into the business and lead generation. Um, if you need any help with business entity and, and taxes and who to reach out to, um, that's one of my big skill sets is kind of the business mindset around real estate. Um, sales, you know, sales is taught. There's so many systems out there. I'm not much of a, a salesy salesman, if you will, um, because I come from service and I come from contribution and I come from more of the business sense around it. But getting your head in the game is, 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 is so important to understand that this is a business, this is a career, and this is going to take some time to build your foundation. So take a look. You can read through all of those questions there. 
Um, there's a lot of myths around real estate. Um, we can go over kind of some of the stats, if you will. 20% um, of everyone that gets their license today will succeed in two years. And what that means is that 80% of people that get their license today are probably likely not going to be in the industry two years from now. I will tell you that that 80% of the population, I would only say that there's maybe 10 to 20% that probably should have never got their license. Uh, meaning they, I don't think they knew what they, they, when you don't know what you don't know, you can grab your license and, and figure out quickly that it's not for you. But then there's that other, I would say, 60% range of people that fall out because one, they, they don't take the time to go through courses such as Ignite and Bold and, and the classes that are, are, their office is put on. They don't ask enough questions or seek enough help and guidance from um, top agents in the office. For some reason, we're getting into the business of, of, of sales, asking people for business, and I see so many individuals not use their own voice to ask for help, to raise their hand and, and get through something. This is so new to you, I can't stress that enough, that you've gotta reach out, you've gotta be proactive in your business. This is your business and no one else is gonna sell real estate except for you. You can only you know, go to so many classes and trainings, but it's up to you to raise your hand when you're not understanding something. It's up to you to really sit down and hone in and talk to yourself about it because that 60%, if you really look back at them, they would be just fine if one, they took more action, they spoke up, they raised their hands, they, they, they didn't take no for an answer and try and figure out why they're always failing. Two, that 60% never practices. So in this business, we're gonna talk heavily about scripts and dialogues and role play. I don't care for all of those words. What I like to tell you is that this is a new industry and that with every new industry comes training. So any job that you've ever had, you probably had to train first before you went on the sales floor. You probably had to train first before you started to actually develop the, the business plan for that, that, that company or that project, right? You had to go through some sort of training. And what happens is, is we get into this self-employed world of real estate and it's up to us to hold our own hand. We don't have an employer saying, sit down for the next two weeks and watch these training videos. Sit down for the next two weeks and do this, this, and this, and this, and then you'll be ready to start work. We have to be disciplined enough for ourselves uh, to do that and, and take action around that. So anyways, the people that take 20, the 20% 20 of people that make it, they're the ones who play all in. They're the ones who, who interact. They're the ones who get dirty and, and get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable. You're going to see in this Ignite series and, and especially this first one, all of the headings say, get comfortable with X. It's because we know that this is a new job for you and every new job came an uncomfortable feature. Without someone holding your hand in a boss to, to guide you through that uncomfortable phase, most of us would never go through it. And so in this industry, we have to do it ourselves. And so getting your head into the game is, is understanding that. It's, it's really that. And, and if I could go back, and I've been doing this now for six, uh, seven years in August, um, if I could go back, I would shake myself, um, because I never raised my hand. I never sought, I never sought advice and help. I had to go down that desperate path of, holy cow, I'm not closing anything. I only have a, a couple pieces of, of business that I'm latching onto with all of my might that needs to come to fruition because I'm going to be starving and on the streets here soon. If I would have just taken out all of that animosity and all of that, that doubt and just raised my hand and attended classes and practiced my scripts and dialogues and role play, I would, have, I would have set myself on fire a lot quicker. And I finally got to that point, but I never want somebody to go down that dark path um, because I was going to be one of that 80% that got out of the industry because I just, I just told myself it wasn't for me. So get your head in the game reach out in times of, of, of need. We are here for you. I'm here for you. That's why I love my new role. Um, sales in real estate was fun. 
Um, but helping training and mentoring and, and, and getting people to the point that I was able to push myself through to is exactly why I'm here. So reach out to anybody and don't be afraid. You'll, you'll hardly ever hear no in this industry, right? If everybody's in this industry to hear to sell, help and serve our clients and buyers and sellers, they're also kind of got that personality to help you. Just don't be afraid. Okay. So also to get started and to kind of, kind of give this an overall perspective is going to be the six personal perspectives. So this is something that Gary Keller has um, uh, basically the, the, the six personal perspectives as a foundation. This is what Gary Keller and his first ALC figured out off the rip um, for an easy, tangible way for us to kind of go through and understand who, like the person that we have to be. We have to connect some dots that, again, no school, no, no education, no business class I've ever been to, leadership class even has ever really gone through some of this stuff. So let, let's go through it one at a time here, six personal perspectives. The first one is commit to self-mastery. We, we've, we've kind of already talked about some of these points, but let's, let's, let's talk more on self-mastery because I think when we see self-mastery, we, we, we kind of just instantly think we know what that means, right? Whatever we wanna do, we master it so we can do it ourselves at a high level, right? And, and a lot of times what we do is we focus then on what we need to learn to do that piece to master, right? And some of times what, what we do is we don't understand that we need to know our strengths and weaknesses. You see, if we know our strengths and weaknesses going into a project or going into something we want to master, a lot of times what people do is they start to focus on their weaknesses. They start to, they start to understand that all throughout life, they've had this weakness. They've had this thing. Uh, for me, I'm shy. I, I don't like to. I don't like to reach out. I don't like to talk to people. I don't really love that piece of it. And and before I could work on that side of myself, I had to make sure <clears throat> that all of my strengths, my strengths were sound. My strengths had a bulletproof plan in place. Because what we're not taught as you go through self mastery and you go through a skill set and new habits and new training is that if your strengths don't have a bulletproof plan, as soon as you start to work on your weaknesses, your strengths can falter. And what you continue to tell yourself is a strength can actually become very mediocre and even into the weakness category because you're spending so much time focusing on your weaknesses. So, I'm not saying don't focus on your weaknesses. It's very important to understand that we have weaknesses. It's very important to tackle them, but only after you've, you know that your strengths are bulletproof and they're not going anywhere, okay? Self-mastery also, I, I can't stress this enough, um, because you guys are on this call, you're already starting, right? The, the action piece around doing is, is doing the activity, but better yet, part of self-mastery is, is a conjunction of, of self-education as well as action and tangible steps. So anybody who's listening to this, anybody that's here, you're already starting with self-mastery. Commit to the 80-20 principle. So this is Pareto's principle. Um, Pareto was an Italian philosopher, and he recognized that in the world of, of everything that you kind of go through, there's what's called an 80-20 principle. And, and I've already kind of accidentally brought it up with the real estate piece. 20% of us make it through the first two years and 80% of us fall out. It's no different in, in, in the world too. The top 20% of the wealth um, comes from the top 20% of the, of the population. And in different uh, towns, same thing. So Pareto understood that there's an 80-20 principle out there and it's everywhere. But let's, let's connect the dots for our business and our industry, okay? What happens is, is when we go through this, we need to understand that whatever activity that we're on is, is, is our 20%, meaning our top 20% activities basically produce 80% of our results, okay? So you're gonna hear at a very high level, lead gen, lead gen, lead gen, lead gen. And the reason why you hear lead gen is because lead generation 
produces 80% of our income and closings, okay? The other 80% of the activities that we need to do, such as marketing and setting up our websites and, you know, tracking our numbers and entering things and data input and different transactional files and compliance, that's the 80% of our day that honestly is not that important. Those activities do not produce results, okay? So study the 80-20 principle, and when you go throughout your day, if you go throughout your day and you feel like you just won the day because you knocked off everything off of your to-do list, ask yourself, how many of those things on your to-do list were money-making activities? Or how many things on that to-do list were, were part of the top 20% of the things that you need to do to make money and to close deals and to help people? Because what we end up doing is we end up going through what I call a, like basically to-do list tunnel vision. We think that if we just knock off everything off our to-do list, we had a very successful day. When in reality, we pushed off the most important things. And so it, it becomes then a non-productive day. We trick ourselves into thinking that we're productive. And then we wake up 30, 60, 90 days later and we have no business. Okay. So pay attention to the activities that you're doing per day. And we're going to go, the, the, the cool part about this Ignite series is we're going to kind of go into to-do list and understanding more of the 20% of what we should be doing on a daily basis. Uh, but before we get there, I, I'll just tell you, if you knock out your top 20% first thing in the morning, the rest of your day becomes that much easier and you accomplish that much more throughout this industry, career, life, 60, 30, 90 days. Step three, six personal perspectives, guys. Step three, moving from E to P. This one, I could not figure out in the slightest what this meant. And I finally believe I've, I've figured out a way to just give it to you guys at a high level. Moving from E to P. E is entrepreneurial. P is purposeful. I really thought that those, they had it backwards. I really thought that we would need to move from purposeful to entrepreneurial. And here, here's what the difference is. Entrepreneurial is the things that you're just coming into this industry with. You're coming into this industry with your pre-programmed notions of what you've heard about the industry. You're coming into this industry with uh, this, this idea around how I'm going to help uh, people buy and sell homes. So that's your base level. We all come to this industry with a very base level entrepreneurial mindset. And that's what's going to come out. That's exactly what you're going to use in the first couple of weeks, months, year. Um, depends on how you're getting your business started. But we need to make sure that you're moving from E to P every step of the way. And so here's the biggest difference. Okay. The, 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 the highlight that, that really clicked for me when I, when I heard this was there's two different ways to ask for business and we're going to, Darby and I are going to role play the two different ways. Okay. Hey Darby, it's Bruce. Hey, it's so glad to see you again. How's life? Oh, it's good. Busy. But good. Yeah. Hey, did you yeah. hear that? I'm a, did you hear that I'm actually in real estate now? No, I haven't. No, yeah, I'm so excited to be in real estate right now. Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily know exactly what I'm doing just yet, but I, I'm, I'm pretty excited that I'm going to go through some courses and, and really learn this stuff. Um, so, so, yeah, I hope one day that, you know, you, you, you and I can help each other in business. Um, but I guess for the time being, I just wanted to let you know that I'm getting started here. Um, how's the kids? Um, well, good for you. Um, and then, um, yeah, they're good. Driving me nuts, but they're good. Okay, great. So how are you? That, how are yours? <laughs> that's that's the entrepreneurial side. That's kind of what we. If you come into this industry and you're told to go reach out to people and introduce yourself, that's honestly how most of us are going to know and and and, and um, uh, just naturally act right. That's that entrepreneurial side that we naturally come in. Now, if we if we tweak that and we move from E to P, the conversation's a little different. Hey, Darby, how are you? It's Bruce. Oh, oh, I'm good, Bruce. How are you doing? 
I, I'm actually doing really well. Hey, I, I know that we're, I know that we're, we're, we're very good friends, but to be honest with you today, I, I have more of a business conversation. Is that okay with you? Oh yeah. What's going on? Well, let's see. I'm actually just started in real estate and I'm pretty excited to get my business off the ground. And, and what I've been going through and doing is, is methodically building up uh, my foundation for my business. So that way I can get out there and help people like yourself buy and sell homes. And so the reason why I wanted to reach out and, and, and more talk business today is because I'm going into this career with a full head of steam. And I really, really, really would love to have you be by my side. And so would you do me a favor? Would you do me a favor? I'm not looking for any names and numbers today. If you have some, that'd be great. But would you do me a favor in that between now and the end of the year, do you think you could help me get my business off the ground? Oh, well, I mean, yeah, I could keep an ear out if I hear anybody. Great. And that's all I'm asking you to do is between now and the end of the year, because real estate is going to be so top of mind for me that I'm, I'm going to be putting my blinders on. I'm going to be grinding. I'm going to be, I'm going to be buckling down. But people mm -hmm. like you are so valuable to me because if you could think of one person, I, and that's all I ask, one person between now and the end of the year that might be looking for some real estate assistance. So I don't even need to sell someone home or help them buy a home. What I really am looking to do is be a resource in the community to friends such as you, uh, friends like you, I should say. Mm -hmm. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, any way I could support you, that's fine. Awesome. Well, hey, I'd be doing myself a disservice if I didn't ask you right off the rip. Is there anybody that you might know? You know, um, you know, I had new neighbors that just moved in. I think they're renting now. So gotcha. I, don't know. I mean, I'll bring you the hub. Okay. Um, you know, yeah, if, if you could bring it up, I, I don't necessarily know if I feel super comfortable right now asking if you have their contact info. However, it's Today's Wednesday. Do you think you'll talk to him before the weekend and I can give you a call on Friday? Oh, yeah, they mow their lawn on Thursday when we do. So, um, yeah, when I talk to him, I think we're, we usually typically do our lawn and then have some beer. Great. Well, hey, I'll <laughs> follow up with you on Friday and maybe swing over and have a beer with you guys. You know what? That'd be awesome, actually. I haven't seen you forever. I love that. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. Hey, I'm going to take my Bring the kiddo. Out. <laughs> I, I will. I will. I'm going to take my real estate hat off now and I'm going to talk to you about your family and blah, 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 Perfect. blah, blah, yeah, blah. Forward. Okay. Right. Yep. That's purposeful. Okay. That's a skill that we have to develop in all aspects of this industry. Right. We have to develop that E to P through the introduction that we're new to real estate. We have to develop that E to P on our consultations and our presentations. We have to develop the E to P from our marketing material and our business and how we, how we understand our budgets and what we spend on our clients, what we spend on ourselves, what we spend on taxes. That's what E to P means. And, and that is, is, if there's one personal perspective that I have latched onto that I have that, that my number one contributing factor to where you see me today, it's step three. As soon as I started being purposeful about what I was doing, my, my everything skyrocketed every single piece of this, this career. Step four, being learning based, right? So when I first read the six personal perspectives, I thought, okay, self mastery, right? I'm going to go to a lot of classes. I'm going to be you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go do things. I'm going to learn. I'm going to master this. Well, that's what I was trying to tell you up, 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 up above in step one. It's not just learning, right? Learning based is step four. Self mastery is making sure your mind's right. Making sure that you can overcome and push your mind out of your way. If you coach with me, you're going to hear me say it time and time again, get out of your own way. What you just told me, I'm hearing you say you're in your way. Get out of your own way. So self-mastery is, is making sure that your mindset is right and that you, you make sure that you come in into this with a bird's eye view, with the whole world's perspective, not tunnel vision. That's what self-mastery is. Being learning-based is, is the things that you're going to want to do to understand that there's different ways of saying those things. That example that I just that I just gave you going from E to P, those two different scripts, 
I learned that going to a script class, right? Being learning based, you're going to pick up so many nuggets and so many things that resonate with you. You see, my style is not for everybody. Other trainers and other educators, that style may gravitate towards you more. You have to continually be learning based because you'll never know what you're going to pull out of a class. I'm seven, I, I, I'm six, seven years into this right now. I'm still learning based every single week, day, month. If there's something I want to learn, I go find the class. I, I, I Google it. I YouTube it. I raise my hand and I ask top producers what they're doing around that subject. That's learning based. And that's that proactive nature that I was talking about. Step five, removing your limiting beliefs. Um, this one, again, I, I really think this can kind of go in conjunction with step one, being the self mastery. Limiting beliefs, uh, Darby, I'm going to pick on you because, uh, because you and I've been coaching now for a little while. I've watched you grow. I've watched you, um, I've watched you blossom. I've watched you struggle. I've watched you cry. I've watched you go through it all. And, yeah. and a lot of that is, <laughs> it's a roller coaster. And, 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 and what causes roller coasters, Darby? Limiting beliefs. So define yeah. a limiting belief for me. Or what, just something, anything. It's something that in my head I think I can't do or that I'm not good at. Um, or it's something that maybe something somebody said like when I was 10 and it's still affecting me even today because I, I believe it. Um, and there's just something that's really like a roadblock. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. That right there, you, you hit the nail on the head when you said something happened while you were 10 and you kind of held it with you. And sometimes you don't even know what you've held with you. Yeah. So I, I use the term pre-programming a lot. Um, I'm a big Stephen Covey fan. Um, Stephen Covey, seven habits of highly, highly effective people and successful people. Um, he's a big proponent of how to, how to explain what pre-programming is. Okay. Pre-programming is, 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 is that nature versus nurture type of, of conversation. Okay. We have a lot of things that we were born with. And then we have a lot of preconceived notions around what we've experienced as we go throughout life. Okay. So for me, in, in one of my, one of my, um, one of my examples, I guess, for my pre-programming was I was a Boy Scout. Okay. So my first experience ever was in door knocking was to sell popcorn. I went door to door with my father and I sold popcorn and I hardly ever got reject. I mean, rejection for me was just somebody not wanting to buy it, which I, I, my dad taught me, Hey, look, just so you know, son, not everybody's going to buy this stuff. Some people can be allergic to it. Some people don't like it. Some people will think it's too expensive and not want to buy it. You have to be okay with that. But until you get somebody to slam in your slam the door in your face or cuss us off their porch, you're not really getting rejected. Okay. That's like, that's like you telling me when dinner's ready that you're not hungry. I don't take that as rejection. I take that as a choice that you're making. And so I had a, a, a limiting, I, I, I didn't have too many limiting beliefs around door knocking when I started in this industry. I had a huge limiting belief around cold calling because at my house, we had one landline. I remember when we got our, our caller ID, but before we had caller ID, we'd be eating dinner, phone would ring, nobody would know if it was a relative or anybody in an emergency. Mom or dad would get up, pick up the phone, and all I would hear is, God, God, you, gotta, you guys gotta, you gotta call me during dinner time. Da, 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 da. You know, I'm sitting there as a kid and I'm listening to this and I'm not, I, I, you know, I didn't think anything of it at the time, right? But now to this day, my, my favorite time to call is in the morning. I do not like calling in the evening because I just am waiting for that person to be like, I can't believe you just called me. I just sat down to dinner. Da, 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 da. Right. And that's a limiting belief that I have that that is something that's real that I have to get over. I have to get out of my mind because the reality is, is that the impression that my father and my mother set with me on people calling during dinner upset them. I don't want to upset people. 
okay? But here's what I didn't catch on to. Here's what I, what's that? Here's what Sorry. I didn't, that's okay. Here's what I, here's what I didn't catch on to. The times that, that my mother or father got grumbly and hung up the phone is what I remembered. The times that a telemarketer or somebody called and, and, and it was a conversation and they invited that person over to our home for an appointment, I never remembered because they didn't raise their voice. They didn't grumble. They didn't throw the, the phone into the thing, right? And so our limiting beliefs come from those, those one-offs, those literally those one-offs where one time something could happen that holds you back from the chances of it never happening to you again, right? The other thing that we call limiting beliefs or, or, we, or we, we use the phrase, uh, uh, our drunk monkey, our drunk monkey. And our drunk monkey is our conscious. It's our conscious that says, you can't do this. You're not good enough. You're not, you're not, you're, you're not smart enough. You're not good looking enough. You, you, you don't have the perfect body. You don't have this. They're going to tell you that. As soon as you say that, they're going to tell you that. That guy, that person is a drunk ass monkey sitting on your shoulder telling you that you can't do something because that monkey remembers that one time in life where something happened that didn't go that same way. Getting over your limiting beliefs will cause you to see the other side of things. Okay. For me, I had to get over cold calling. I really had to get over that. I had to get over the fact that people are not as rude as what my mind was telling me. Now, when people, I don't think I know the last time somebody's cussed me out. I really don't. It's, it's usually just a hang up. Um, after that, even when you count the number of people that hang up on you, it's very little. Like it's a, it's literally like probably less than 5% of the time out of calling a hundred people. I bet you there's only about five times somebody's going to hang up with me. And so we have this mindset and this belief around this one, two, three, four, five percent of the time type of things that cause us not to do those activities where 95% of the results are on the other side. We got to remove those things. And the way to remove the, well, actually, we're going to probably go into the ways to remove those here, but we'll, we'll bring that back around. Step six, be accountable. Um, Accountability, I think, is defined in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, I, I go through the struggle all the time of should I have a coach? Should I not have a coach? Is my coach really helping me? Do I really do I really do it? I have those. I have that, and I'm a coach, guys. Like I'm a coach, and I still I still think, do I need this? Do I do I really want to pay a thousand dollars a month for my coach? Are they really helping me? Is this more of a burden than it, is a, than it is a positive thing? Every time I go down that road, what am I doing? I'm bringing up step five. Because the reality is, is that when I am accountable and that when I have to hold myself to my coaching calls, I make sure that my commitments that I made to my coach got done that week. And after I look back and I reflect week after week, I, I can personally tell you that I would not have gotten as much done as I have done today, if that makes sense. And so if I look at that way and I put a tangible number on it, maybe I did get that extra closing that month because I was accountable and I held myself to what my coach was talking to me about and what I committed to. Okay, so that's accountability for me. I have to, I, I have, to have a coach. Every time I start thinking about why I pay a thousand bucks a month for a coach, I have to reflect and I have to know that accountability is important. And I have to understand that when somebody simply holds me accountable, it's, it's, it's them, it's them just asking me if I, if I did those things that I set myself out to do, that's all accountability is for me, but it's defined in different ways for different people. Um, so one of the other things that, that, that I've seen people do and that works very well is find an accountability partner around that topic that you want to stick to. So if you're having trouble picking up the phone and calling your database, find somebody else who's having the same issue. Don't find the person that's very comfortable calling their database. 
they can be a decent accountability partner, but they're not, they don't understand the same struggles that you're going through because they just naturally were able to pick up the phone. On the flip side of things, there's other people that have no problem pick, uh, no problem calling their database, but they have all the problem in the world calling people they don't know. Go find an accountability partner who, who has that same struggle and, and challenge yourselves to call five people a day and then mastermind around how it went. Same with scripts and dialogues and role play. If you're having trouble practicing for a half an hour a day by yourself, you need to find an accountability partner and, and practice a half an hour a day with that person. I'm, I'm a big scripts person. I'm a big dialogue person because I have a ninth grade reading level. I have a ninth grade uh, intellect as far as grammar goes. I need scripts and dialogue or I don't sell real estate. I can't see, I don't, I don't even know if you don't or can't there. There's a big reason why I had to hold myself accountable to scripts. It was the number one thing. The number one thing that resonates with me is when I went, when I went to a training and somebody said, hey, do you know how many hours a day Michael Phelps, Michael Jordan, or LeBron James trains, even in their off season? Do you know how many hours a day they practice their craft? Four to six hours a day, every day of the year, unless they're taking a vacation or their trainer or somebody has, has told them they should take the time off to rest their body. After that, in the on season, it's eight hours a day. It's a full-time job. They make millions of dollars to practice because when it's game time, they need to know what they're doing. It's no different for us. We can make hundreds and thousands and millions of dollars in this industry if we, if we just practice a half an hour a day. So for me, when I heard that, it was totally worth it. And that's what held me accountable. I didn't need a script partner. I needed, to, I needed the tangible piece. I needed the, the connection of the dots to go, wait a second. Yeah, how am I supposed to want to make this much money if I'm not going to practice? Like I went to a new job, they trained me, which was practice. Everything I've ever done in life had practice involved with it. Why is this any different? As soon as I grab it, as soon as I grasp that, that's the only accountability I needed. And that's what I set myself out to do. So anyways, long story short, accountable, accountability is going to be different in, in many people's eyes. If you're having trouble holding yourself accountable, reach out to your coach, your mentor, your trainer, and, and figure out and help mastermind and develop ways that, that you can hold yourself accountable because there are multiple different ways, okay? Six personal perspectives, I love it. Number three, write that down, E to P, my favorite, absolute favorite. This, this page, number 14, um, I, I, I'm, I'm a big proponent of talking about this over and over and over again. I already told you guys, play all in, play full on the explorer, this, 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 uh, this left side, if you will, that's playing full on. I, when I first started, I was more in the middle of the vacationer and the prisoner. I, I did not, I didn't play full on and I convinced myself I was on this side. So read through there. I'm not going to beat a dead horse, even though I like to. expectations expectations for 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 this session so i've kind of given you a general overview and, and we've and we've talked a lot about you know finding that desire and finding and, and playing full on and, and this is a new career and blah 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 it, the rest of this power session you've got to understand that the reason why inactivity happens is because we don't have a strong enough desire on the end so finding your big why is going to be talked about heavily in here. Finding your big why is what I would say, finding your big desire, your reason for doing this, right? The, 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 the hardest times and, and sometimes the best times when I ask people why they got into real estate and they say, well, I've always kind of had this interest in real estate. I've kind of always had this, 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 this way of houses. I like seeing these things. When I hear that, I know that we've got some work to do because that's not a desire and that's not a big why. If you like homes and you wanna see homes, you don't have to get your real estate license to do so, you go to open houses. 
right? If you love homes and you like homes and you're always had an interest in it, then you should have a rental portfolio of about 20, 30, 40, 50 properties, right? So if I get that answer, I know that we're going to have to dig pretty deep. And if that's your answer, I, I, don't, I don't discount it at all. I, I will raise my hand all day long and tell you guys I was not the person for real estate. I, did, I told everybody, no, I wasn't going to get into real estate. I thought it was a very hokey profession. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was, I didn't, I didn't treat it as the professionalism that it needs to be treated as. Um, and I, and, and I, I got into it and I developed that and I understood. So develop your big why. It's, it's, it's very important because you won't do the daily activities that you need to do unless you have a tangible reason to do so, right? In, in any other job, I don't even care if it's salary or hourly, but you knew that your activity had a result behind it, right? You knew that if you went to work, clocked in, did your job, you were going to get paid your hourly wage or maybe your salary, wage, salary, right? You knew that that action had, had basically something that was going to happen on the other end, cause and effect. In real estate, we go through day to day to day to day action before we can see any results. Sometimes we take very little action and see instant results. Oftentimes we take massive action and we don't see that result for another day, two days, three days, a week, a month, a year. And what it is is because we can't see that tangible outcome. We don't see that paycheck coming in until we close a house. That paycheck isn't directly related to the hours spent on your daily activities. And so we're so programmed to, to understand that we need to do to receive, do and receive. Well, in real estate, you're going to do, 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 and then start to receive. And that can get very daunting on us. And, 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 and the only thing that will propel you forward is to find that desire to find that why of why you're in this industry. And, and if you coach with me, the big thing that we go through is what I call the financial thermostat. So if you wanna write that down and bring that back up to me, perfect, I love going through that. Um, let's see here. Ground rules, make it happen, four skills. We already talked about most of this stuff. All right, big why, monetary goals. As soon as you can find your desire and we go through the financial thermostat exercise, that's when you'll understand what it is you need to do every day. And if you don't do those activities, you're never going to hit your monetary goal, which means you're probably never going to hit your big why or your desire. Um, there's a lot of different exercises to go through that. And honestly, that's a completely different class. But read through this, the big why it's so important. This will be some thought provoking things. For you to go through um, this big question this big uh big future uh piece really causes you to start thinking right your family and friends are so proud of your success and consistently referring business your way if you have a desire and you have a big why this will become truth and reality faster than you know it's because you come off as more genuine your activities that you're doing is for a tangible goal it's for something a result and when you do it at a high level, you come off as genuine and sincere. You never will come off as, as a salesy salesman because a salesy salesman, their activity is directly related to a paycheck at the end, right? In an in a, in a easier way. When they sell something, they get paid that same day. When we grab a lead, we still have to nurture them. We have to go through the process with them. We have to go find a home for them or put, a, put, the, home in, or put the sign in the yard. We have to take them from under contract to close. That is a very long process and, and you can't be a salesy salesman to do so. You, you, you have to have a servant's heart and you have to come from contribution. And when you do that, all of these things start to become true. All of these things start to happen naturally. And it's because you have a desire behind the activity. So do this exercise. This is on page 20 and 21. It's important. If you don't have a big why, you will flail around like a fish out of water. You will feel lost and, 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 and can't breathe. And that feeling is scary. 
And I say that because I was there. Talking about your big why, okay? I, I, I challenge people with this. And when you get in, when you're new to the industry, this can be a twofold kind of answer. But typically speaking, when you get into this industry, if you're, if you're proposed the question, at the end of this year, would you have rather sold 10 houses and made $10,000 or would you rather have sold one home and made $100,000? Most people will pick the one home and $100,000. And what I'm getting at here is we see, we, we see a lot of things counted in, in, in closed transactions and closed volume and stuff like that. But all of that relates to a monetary goal that we have for ourselves, right? If you sell 10 houses and only make $10,000, you can't, you probably can't pay for your family's life. You probably can't pay for your home and your expenses. So what I'm getting at is we got to get real with ourselves and that we're here to make some money. We're here to sell people homes, to have a servant's heart and to help care for people, but we're not going to sit here and do it for free. And so that's why most of, most of what we need to tie is that big why and that big desire to a, a monetary goal because you got to continue to live life and you got to continue to have income coming in to get to that big desire and to get to that big goal. Okay. So this monetary goal, this is a very simple, what I call a GCI breakdown. So it's your gross commission income breakdown. If there's an average home sales price of 200,000 and you average, you average 3% to you, that's $6,000, okay? So that's every, every one sale is $6,000, which means if your goal is $100,000 off of that, how many homes do you need to sell? Say that again, Darby? I'm gonna say like 12. If it's off of 200,000, I'd say 12. Yep, right around there. Yep, because 10 homes is 60 grand, right? So add another couple. Yeah, you're you're a little you're a little low, but that's okay. I'm, I'm low. <laughs> Let's break I, it down. Our sales commission's higher, or I mean, our average price point's higher. Well, our average price point's <laughs> higher, but our average commission is a little lower. Yeah. yeah. My rule of thumb right now is four hundred thousand gets you about ten thousand. Four hundred thousand dollar purchase price, about ten thousand. Sometimes eleven, depending upon if it's three percent or two point eight. This is what I'm talking about. This is what you want to break down. If you have a desire and a why, and you can come up with a monetary goal that you need, if you want to net $100,000 in gross commission income, you want to add your market center cap to it. This is, this is for the Austin uh, Center, so they pay a little, little higher than we do in our region. So you need to make $120,000 divided by your $6,000 per pop and you're at about 21 closings to then net $100,000. You can look at this multiple different ways, but it is just that. It's just simple math. And so what I do, mine goes a little deeper. I've got basically like an A through K, I think. Um, I like to break down 100. If I want $100,000, I need to make my market center cap up as well as my taxes as well as my mark as as well as my business expenses so i like to look at it from that standpoint and so i add a few others in there but that's that's going into a much higher level than this course is for and if you train and mentor and coach with me we can go through all of that um, this is just a more of a simplistic breakdown so that way you can start to grab an idea of where you want to have your unit count be or your closings be okay that's 25. Again, they want, you know, do this. And, and if you're going to coach with me, we're going to do this together. Skill two, commit to daily lead generation. All right. Darby, I know she's on the phone right now. She said it best. This is, we go through a roller coaster. We go through things where we go through our ups and downs. All of a sudden we're busy. We close all that, we close all that real estate deal. Uh, excuse me. We get really busy, we close all those real estate deals, and then if we're not consistently lead generating, what happens is, is once you close, you come out of your closing with a paycheck and a thought of, 
oh boy, who's next? Now I got to go grind again. Now I got to go lead generate. And that would be your low because you don't have anything really coming in. You have no, you have no um, check at the end of the tunnel. Um, and so going through those, those seasonalities and those ups and downs and those roller coasters, whatever you want to call it, the way to circumvent that, the way to get out of the quote unquote seasonality trend of real estate, the way to take yourself out of, well, I closed three houses and now I have nothing. Um, and now I got to do eight hours of lead generation a day versus two hours. It caught it. it you got to get started off the right foot. And when you can get started off the right foot, the job becomes fun. It becomes engaging. It, it, it causes you to know that if you do two hours of lead gen in the morning and you have no appointments in the afternoon, go golfing, go to the water, go take your kids out, go for a hike, go take your spouse out to eat, go take a nap, right? Go learn something new, go take a course, go read a book. The coolest part about real estate is, is if we can keep our emotions in check, we can keep the drunk monkey off of our back and we can do the daily activities, we, you'll stay out of that roller coaster. And, and that roller coaster is fierce and it's real. Right now, I am stressed to the max because what happened is, is COVID hit and I had some people that were ready to go buy homes and through COVID, I wasn't able to show them homes. I wasn't able to close. So they kind of hung around and I just kept touching base with them. But I did not stop my lead generation because I knew that once COVID was over, as soon as I get them back into homes and we close, I need to have another pipeline. I need to have something else built up. So I sat there and I lead generated throughout all of COVID. And now what I'm faced with is I've got a lot of buyers on my plate and I've got two listings going on. and I could easily make the excuse that I have no time. I really could. I have, five, I, have, I have five buyers pending right now and two listings pending, and I have four active buyers looking for homes. There is not two hours in my day that I can spend lead generating. I, I could literally justify that to myself. My drunk monkey, he would be cheersing with a, with a beer right now. But I know that if I do that, I'm really setting my fall and winter up for a, a complete failure. I know for a fact that if I do that, I, I will have much more, I have, I'll have much bigger issues come fall and, and winter. So for me today, last night, I didn't get done and close my computer down until 9 p.m. I woke my butt up at 6 a.m. and I was at the office at 6.30 just so I could get prepped for this class and I could get my lead generation done. I wasn't calling people at 6.30, but I was sending out emails. I was following up. I was sending out text messages. Hey, when you get up, like get back at me type of thing. You've got to figure out those ways to get those hours in because I've went, I, 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 well, luckily that was one thing that I never had to actually fumble through and do. I never wanted to see those ups and downs. I've watched too many people get to those ups and downs and freak out in the fall and winter when there's not traditionally a whole lot of business going on. There's only not traditionally a whole lot of business going on because once agents get past the summer months and we're all busy, they didn't lead generate through the summer months. So of course they're going to be slow. I average four closings a month in December. I average three closings a month in January. And February is, is about two, but then March spikes back up to about the five, six level. November, I think I averaged three. So what I'm getting at is if you do the activity, and I know that during the, act, during the summer months, it's the hardest to get in these activities and lead gen. But if you do that, your family will have Christmases like you've never would imagine. You'll be planning vacations like you never have dreamed of because you're, because there, it's not wrong that you slow down in the, in the spring or in the fall. What it is, is that you can still close just as many deals. There's just not as many agents out there. And so it's easier in the, in the fall. It's easier in the winter for me because nobody out there is grinding. And now I don't have to grind. I don't, I never have to compete in the winter. I never have a buyer come to me and say, well, yeah, we've been talking to two other agents. 
that only happens in the spring and summer because that's when agents are out there working. So the fall and winter, you can still close a lot of deals and you can still take a lot of time off, but it's all about keeping and committing to two hours a day, two hours a day, two hours a day, two hours a day. That's kind of step one. I do want to kind of take a quick just time out from, I guess, this PDF and talk about tracking and doing that, right? If you're lead generating for two hours a day, you need to start count counting how many contacts you can get in those two hours. And then what you'll progress into is if I lead generate for two hours a day, at the end of the week, I should have X amount of contacts. An X amount of contact should lead me into X amount of appointments. Again, that's going to be a little higher level than this, this, this class is in getting started. But that's what I coach you through is not just focusing on two hours a day. That's the beginning is just getting your time blocking in. Then we work on scripts and dialogue to where you capture more contacts, you ask for more business, and you get, start to gain more appointments through connections. So when you start, it's not, it's not um, wrong to call and, and talk to 50 people and, and only get one potential lead when you first start. It's because you don't have your skills sharpened yet. The, the, the training and the scripts aren't there. We want to get you down to the point where you can talk to 15 to 20 people and grab a lead off of, off of those contacts. So know that you start with the hours and you track your contacts for hours. And then from there, you want to you want to, you want to um, track your contacts to appointments. Lead generation. Well, let's go right into it then. Lead generation funnel. It's pretty much what I was just talking about. If you can think of like a bigger rim out here, everybody can still see my screen, correct? Cool. If you think of this top funnel over here, this is what I would consider uh, your contacts, okay? It's a bigger funnel. You need to talk to more people that then become leads. Then you nurture your leads and some fall out and some, some continue down the funnel. You need to nurture your leads into appointments, okay? Not every lead will turn into appointment for whatever reason. Some people will stop calling you back. Some people will go into a new lease. Some leads will move to a different area. Some leads will, will change their search area that, that's out of our parameter. Then once you have your appointments, you need to understand that some people think that they're ready to do this and they're not. So sitting down with, an, with somebody at an appointment, you're probably only gonna start off getting about 50% of all of your appointments to actually transpose into agreements. And agreements, what I mean by that is the agreement to work with you, the exclusive right to buy and the exclusive right to sell. That's what I really mean about uh, um, appointments to agreements, uh, the, the written agreement to work with you. But even from there, not everybody that signs those things pan out, right? I'm working with somebody right now who just found out that they have some medical things going on in their extended family that they would really like to contribute some of their down payment to that family's needs. And, and it's going to cause them to not be able to purchase in this market. And so I can't fault anybody for that. So they, some things don't pan out, but for the most part, I, I would say that, you know, your appointments to agreements is about 50, 50, but your agreements to closings um, should be somewhere around 75 to 80%. And then from there, that's when you have your contracts or your under contracts to close and you get to payday. As far as contracts goes from under contract to close, not, not all times do they close. I would say, you know, depending upon the agent, depending upon who you speak to, you're going to find stats from 5% fallout up to 20% fallout. I truly, truly, truly believe that the 20% fallout type of people they just don't have the skills necessary to understand that they probably should have weeded that person out right in here. They didn't ask enough questions to understand that that person probably shouldn't be buying or selling. I run more at about a five to 7% fallout. It's because I don't want to put anybody under contract that I don't confidently know is going to be able to close. Um, that's a lot of time out there and a lot of effort to get to this point, not to close. 
I have, I had three contracts fall apart last week. I got them all back on track this week. So I, they never really left this funnel. They just caused a lot of headache for a sec. And then we get down to payday. Okay. That's kind of that flow. And the reason why we need to understand tracking is so important. If you're not tracking how many contacts you can make in two hours, you'll never know how many leads you get to out of how many contacts. And if we're, con if we're constantly looking at how much money we need to make and how many closings we need to have, we have to work our way backwards up this funnel. And the only way to do it is to understand your conversion and where your skill level's at up, off the rip. Calling every session, every single Ignite session, there's gonna be a call place. And, and you guys are kind of getting lucky. You're getting very, very lucky that you're not in front of me right now because I hated this step. I couldn't stand it. I, I despised it, but it is what got me over my fear. It's what got me over the uncomfortableness. It, my, one of my, so I love E2P. You, you're always going to hear that. I love E2P. But the thing that helped me go from E2P was another phrase. Get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable. Right? Anytime you've ever done something new in life, it was uncomfortable to start, right? You're riding a bike as a kid, you take those training wheels off, those knee scrapes are uncomfortable, right? You go, for, you go wakeboarding for the first time and you can't, and you're watching everybody get up out of the water and stand up on the water and, and you can't figure out how they're doing it. And you can try 20 and 30 times before your arms are about to fall off and you can't even wake up the next day and wake up and, and, and try again. That, that was me. I was, that was, I was so frustrated. But throughout life, we go through this and we're super fine with getting uncomfortable with feeling uncomfortable and things that we want to do. And so if you don't have a why and you don't have a desire, call sessions are going to be very uncomfortable for you. So read through this. Make sure that you're starting to make calls. The first calls that you're making is really setting up people to understand that you're in business. Okay. It's the introduction scripts. It's the I'm new to business. It's what Darby and I just went over that we need to be doing either through an email format or I, I highly recommend a phone call. It's more powerful. It causes you to fumble forward. It causes you to be uncomfortable and sweaty and understand that that's okay. Okay. I'll show you the scripts down low um, when we get down there. Uh, four powerful habits. This is what you should be focused on uh, every single day. So it's called the daily 10-4. Four. four habits you need to focus on and 10 things around it. Enter in 10 new contacts a day. So to start, a lot of people will take a full day and enter in 100 contacts. That's fine and that's great, but you didn't prospect. You didn't follow up or you didn't, you didn't, you didn't get into the habits, right? If you start off with entering 100 people in your database a day, you're setting yourself up for a, a, the wrong habit because after you get your initial database uploaded, you should still have the habit of, of constantly feeding your database. So when you start off the rip, yeah, if you want to add 20, 25 a day till you get caught up, great. But that's only if you can get through these other things. Um, speak with 10 people in your database a day, meaning reach out to them, call, text, email. Um, when you're getting started, I'll sh like, again, I'll show you those scripts, follow up. Handwritten notes are one of the most powerful things that I can preach to you that I do. Um, right here. I have my, I have my June. Oh, you guys can't, I'm literally holding up my envelopes in front of the camera. Um, I have probably one, two, like 16 envelopes for July that I need to write and hand out and do. And I still do it seven years in because the power of a handwritten note by far is probably one of the top lead generation sources for me. It's unreal how all of a sudden somebody will reach out and say, I've been meaning to reach out to you. And, you, and I think, wait, yeah, I haven't talked to you in a while, but oh, I just wrote you a handwritten note a couple weeks ago. Perfect. Know your market, preview 10 homes a day, or pre preview 10 homes a day. In, in this market, don't go set up 10 showings a day. You're gonna upset people, you're gonna piss them off. Um, with the COVID virus, we shouldn't be in homes unless we're tangibly have buyers looking. 
but go online, go through and, and look through the, the photos and the Matterports and start to understand the price for what you get. Set yourself up on searches in the MLS from 300 to 400 and constantly understand what's being advertised and what's being sold in those price points. That's kind of getting to know your market. Okay. So the daily 10, four, the daily 10, four is, is, is important and it's powerful. And if you can just stick to those four habits every day, this is your 20%. Everything else, if it doesn't fall in this category, you have to wait and you have to push that off until these things are done. And then you can follow your last 80% of whatever you decided needs to be put on your to-do list. Success tracking. Okay. A lot of different ways to track things. Okay. I'm going to pull up a couple of different tools. This is the Ignite tool. And in the print PDF file, if you click on this and it's going to come up with this daily habit and this daily tracker, there's four categories. So these little icons down low here, this is your conversations. This is your, or I'm sorry, this is your database entries. This is your conversation to your, to your sphere. This is your um, handwritten notes. And then this is your home previews. This is how you're going to start to understand where you're faulting. If you go through this tracker, okay, and you go, you go through this tracker and you do this every single day for 90 days and you come to me and you tell me you do not have a piece of business yet, I can guarantee you that there's multiple days that you did not, that you did not hit 10 on this tracker. It's just, it's, it's, it's inevitable. Every time I hear somebody complain, I ask them to show me how they're tracking. I ask them to, to teach me their, their, their activities that they do on a daily basis. And every single time, 100% of the time, 10 out of 10 times, it's because they focused on their 80% and not their 20% that got them the results. Every single I'll time. agree with that. I, I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that. Do it. <laughs> we, we all do. We all do. And it's, it's not to fault you. And that's why there's trackers. And that's why the example of the tracker, like, like how unrealistic would it be for this tracker to be like, yeah, this person did 10 out of 10, everything all day long. Right. It's not real. It, it's, it's simply not real. But what is real is if you don't make up for it the next day, you're going to get behind and you're going to be sitting there at, at 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, really wondering what I'm doing, why I'm in the industry and how I'm, how I can progress. It's very, very important. Using influencing sales skills. So we talked about scripts. We talked about it over and over and over again. We're, gonna, we're not going to skip over this because we've, we've provided a lot of content for it. But I really want you guys, we already went over the purpose of scripts. It's going from E to P, just like this says. Getting comfortable with scripts. I encourage you to go on KW Connect and type in how to use scripts and watch that video. It's literally five minutes. So it's how to use scripts and it's by Jeff Glover. I will tell you that your limiting beliefs around scripts are no different than others. Do not convince yourself that what you feel and how you resistant you are towards scripts is reality because the reality is, is that your reality is everybody else's reality. Everybody thinks the same thing. And it's never the right way to look at it. And once you get through that mindset and get your drunk monkey out of the way for scripts, you're going to be just fine. This is how you learn scripts. Let me get down to the piece here. Right here. Memorize scripts in six steps. I cannot preach to this enough. So little known fact about me, I read through this exact same document, this exact same step system. And I didn't follow it and I wasn't closing business. I kept telling myself the same things you are going to tell yourself. You're going to tell yourself, this doesn't sound like me. This isn't me. I don't speak like that. I don't want to do this. I'll never learn this. There's so many things that I have to memorize. How do I find the time in the day to memorize it? Well, mark my words that by doing these six steps, a half an hour a day for literally maybe just simply probably 60 days, you will be 
in the top 10% of our entire industry for scripts and dialogue. 60 days, half an hour a day, five days a week, but you have to follow these six steps and you will be light years ahead of people. Everybody tells me that, oh, Bruce, you're the one that knows all the scripts and da, 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 da. I don't, I don't know all the scripts. I still practice, I'm seven years in, I still practice them because I, I don't have them all memorized, but I've practiced them in these six steps and, I, and any script that I've ever been given, this is exactly what I have to do because if anybody asks me, because now I've got this little, I got this, I got this weight on my shoulder that everybody expects me to know all these scripts. I expect myself to know them, but I also expect myself to continually practice them. Using these six steps are going to set you light years ahead of people. I'm telling you, light years ahead of people. Get comfortable with scripts. Keep seeing it. Get comfortable with this. Get comfortable with that. The best thing that I can tell you just off the rip is stand up, memorize the script aloud, follow those six steps. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but if you're not going to practice scripts, I, I can tell you that you're only going to close maybe a quarter to half of the business that you could actually close. When you interview with people and somebody tells you that you're interviewing for the position and they've met with two other agents, if you only know a little more scripts than they do, you'll get the bid, you'll get the win every single stinking time unless there's a relationship with that other agent unless they're best friends or they're a relative other than that if you know your scripts and you practice it six times or um, um, with those six steps you'll win every single competitive um, interview that you have here is the scripts and i know um uh, Caleb, I think just left for a sec, but page 43 is the new to scripts, or I'm sorry, new to real estate industry scripts. Again, calling with those scripts. We're not going to take the time out of here to do so, but you need to make sure that you're practicing your scripts on real people as well as other agents. Find those different things. Uh, Caleb, there's um, intro. There's these are the scripts that I keep talking about are on page 43 and 44 of of this PDF. These are the scripts for I'm new to real estate. Remind people that you're new to real estate. Um, again, you're gonna read through this and go, this isn't me. I don't sound like this. And when I use these scripts, I don't I don't say these verbatim anymore. I I remember I memorize them verbatim. I don't use them verbatim. Okay, that's the biggest connection that I want you guys to make. Don't start, you, don't start using them in your own way before you learn them verbatim. You'll do yourself a disjustice and you'll never understand the power of them. So I don't intro, hello, this is Bruce Carley with Keller Williams Realty. How are you? Do you have a moment? I don't say that anymore. Hey, this is Bruce. I'm a real estate agent and I'm calling. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not selling anything today. I'm calling because I just wanted to let you know that I'm actually pretty new to real estate and I'm so excited about joining Keller Williams. You see, I learned it verbatim and I know that when somebody answers with, no, no, thank you. I can say, oh, no, I ain't selling you anything. Hold on. Right. But I know then right after I say that, because I know the script verbatim, I can go into the script. I can go into what I wanted to talk about. But if I don't know it verbatim, somebody saying, no, oh, no, I don't, I don't want anything can throw you off guard to a point that you have no, you have no clue what to do next. Skill four, being accountable. We, we've already talked about that. We've talked about your big why and your, and your monetary goals. Read through that. Um, again, I, when I teach, I really like to bring up all of these points in, in different areas. And you can see when things are repeated in one 70 page document three and four times, I'm telling you, that's the stuff you focus on, okay? Let's go over the four quadrants, figuring out the 80-20 rule and what's important and what's not. If you write this down, and we're running out of time here, but here's the four quadrants right here. You have urgent, not urgent, important, and not important. And what happens is, is we get things that go in these quadrants, and this is where we, where we start to falter. We don't ask ourselves, the task that I'm going to start doing, where does it fall? 
Quadrant three, it's interruptions. It's the people that come by the office and knock on the door to say, what's up? It's not important. It's not urgent. So if you're in the middle of something that's urgent and important, tell them to go away. If you're in the time wasting section, then maybe you'll allow the interruptions to happen. Here's where you need to focus, quadrant two. Your quadrant two is the most valuable, most important piece. And here's why. When you get started, you're gonna have a lot in quadrant one and quadrant two. As you tackle quadrant two and, and, get, and understand this, they're important things, they're not urgent, right? It's not urgent that you make uh, two hours of lead gen a day, right? It's not urgent. It's not dire. It doesn't cause you to, to do anything, but it's important, right? You don't have to lead generate for two hours a day. There's nobody that's going to slap you on your wrist that says do it. There's nobody that's going to say you owe me 500 bucks now that you didn't lead generate like you told me you would. And so you, you can label it as important, but the reality is our minds know it's not important. But if you understand that you need to do it and you understand the importance of it and stick to quadrant two, what happens is, is you have no emergencies. You have no crises because if you don't lead generate, you're going to have a financial emergency. If you don't follow up with somebody, you're not going to close business and you're going to have emergencies. So once you tackle all of your emergencies, everything else that comes in your day will only ever fit in quadrant two, three, and four unless there's something that comes up, but I can assure you there's no, there's no such thing as a real estate emergency. The other thing about holding yourself accountable and understanding what you're doing is developing your own systems and habits. Caleb, you're going to get access to this. And Carolyn, I'm not sure if I've shared it with you, but I'm going to share it with Rita. I've made a folder of all the things that I've developed. And this is my daily, daily to-do list. What you have to do is you have to write down all, you have to mind dump right here, okay? Every time somebody writes a to-do list out, they mind dump and then they start working down the list or they pick, cherry pick the things that they want to do. This is your mind dump. Off of your mind dump, you need to figure out your top 20% or in this case, it'd be your top 40%, right? So what you have to do is you have to figure out what are the top 20% of these items that I need to do, and I can't do any of the other six until I get these four done. Out of the four, what are those top two? And then out of your top two things that you need to do today, what is the most important thing? And then you work yourself backwards. As soon as you get the most important thing done, cross it off. And then up here, this was down here, so then you cross it off, and now you know exactly what you need to do next, step number two. It, and if you stick to that, and if you believe in that, you should never be going over here and say, well, I got the most important thing done. Now I'll hack at this and I'll get back to this later. You're not using the system right. Okay, this, then it becomes just a to-do list. You might as well not waste your time with this paper. You might as well just get a notepad. Cross this off. Now here's where choice comes in. You have the choice now of what you wanna do next, these next two things, because you've already knocked off two out of the four. Only till you have that done can you actually do the other six items, okay? It, that's the way that I found myself to use the four quadrants model in conjunction with my to-do list. And then tell my one thing is done, everything else is a distraction. Meaning these other six things, they're distractions. They're 80%. They're not my top 20% income producing activities. This is my overflow. Anything that I don't get done for the day or whatever comes at me during the day, like things come at us. Sometimes we need to remove and replace. Sometimes we don't need to replace anything. It needs to go to the next day. This is my rolling to-do list. This is where I, I, I know that when I get in in the morning, there's going to be things that I didn't accomplish that day. That's what's going to go on my next phase of to-do. Okay. Live by your calendar. Okay. I think that, let me just double check that. That's where we end here. Yep. Yeah. Living by your calendar, okay? We talked about it, right? Don't go into the week going, well, today I'm gonna lead gen generate for eight hours a day. Tomorrow, I'm going to work on my website. Wednesday, I'm gonna work on designing my business cards and my, um, and my um, um, gosh darn it, my for sale sign. That's not how the day-to-day -day business goes. And so you cannot set yourself 
up on the wrong foot in this industry. Because when you're building your foundation, you can build bad habits, okay? So if you're, if you're used to doing one day of lead gen a week, then when you start real estate and you have no website to design because it's already built and you have no business card to design because you already have them, you're going to look at your week and go, well, I guess I got my lead gen out of the way today. What do I do next? Two hours of lead gen a day, every single day, Monday through Friday, work on your 80% in the afternoon, scripts and role play in the morning. So my perfect day is simply 8.30 to 9 scripts and role play. Before 8.30, I develop my to-do list. I knock out those stupid emails that don't really need a to, they really don't need to go on my, on my to-do list for the day. I can knock them out in 30 seconds. So I start my day usually around 7.30 or 8. 8.30 to 9 scripts and role play. 9 to 11 lead generation. 11 to noon is my tidy up time. That's the time that I take to, when I'm lead generating, do not, do not, do not fall into the category of, I lead generated, I just got a lead, now I have a name and phone number, now I need to enter them into my CRM, I need to put them on a smart plan, and then I'll call the next person. Don't do that. You're lead generating. Those activities of putting them into your, your CRM, setting them up on a touch program, setting a calendar reminder of when to talk to them next, that is not a lead generation activity. That is part of your 80% that needs to go after lead generation. So I do those types of things from 11 to noon and then from noon to whatever I take lunch. And then my afternoons, that's when I learn. That's when I go to my own, my own trainings. When I go, when I go read a book, when I go to appointments, when I need to set somebody up on a search, that's my 80% timeline. And if I don't have anything to do, it's okay for me to go home that day. It's okay for me to go spend time with the family because I did the activity and the next day I'll do the same thing. So anyways, that's, uh, I'm just going to scan through here quickly, but I'm pretty sure we've got all of that here. Holding yourself accountable. I mean, that's what coaches are for. Find your accountability piece. Um, I know we, we really hit the nail on the head up there. Agreement of expectations. Okay. These are cool. Th these are very cool to, to commit to yourself. There's an agreement of expectation that you are looking at doing and, and can sign off on. And these are the things that you're going to believe in, in this, in this series, family and significant other agreement. This is the thing that I needed to have that conversation with my wife around a new business and a new industry will cause me to spend more time. I can't just jump into real estate and think that, well, eight hours a day of the 80% that doesn't matter is still activities that I that is going to flourish, right? I had to make a commit to my wife that if I needed to get some things done that day, I may come home a little later. I may come home a little earlier. We need to plan these things together. I need you to be all in with me, especially because my wife and I made the decision that she was going to be a stay at home mom. And I was going to be the sole breadwinner in a commission based industry. That was one of the toughest things that we ever had to sit down and do. Um, and, and it's powerful. And, and going through that commitment letter with her uh, was a game changer. I'll, I'll never forget it. Read through there. I really appreciate you guys. I, I know we didn't have to go to two hours today, but expect some of these other sessions to really go through. This is the building foundation. This is the base. And, and read through here. So take this next 20 minutes that we're not on here. Make your calls. Go through here. Fill out your ahas. Think about what you're going to do next and think about how you're going to structure your day and, and, and appreciate and make sure that two hours of lead gen are in there at a minimum and you will set yourself on the right foot and the right foundation. Okay. Any questions before I let you guys go? Okay. I really appreciate it guys. If you do think of anything, reach out to me. Okay. Caleb, I'm hoping to see you tomorrow. No, I'm so sorry. I was going to see you tomorrow on our call, but I, my, uh, I had a closing that was supposed to happen Tuesday that got pushed to Thursday. So I will meet you and I, we will talk sometime really soon. Thank you to the rest of you.